Good morning. Notice that the tuning forks had slightly different frequencies. This was due to the fact that a mass was added to one of the tuning forks. That mass decreases the pitch or frequency. So let's see what happens when I strike both tuning forks at the same time. Let's listen. What we just heard were beats. A beat is a periodic variation in volume or intensity. Beats occur when two sources that have slightly different frequencies interfere. So the key to understanding beats today is interference. Now can the beat frequency change? In a moment, I'm going to show you a video where I move the mass slightly upwards. Let's listen. By lifting the mass, the pitch of the tuning fork changed slightly, and this altered the beat frequency. So the beat frequency seems to depend on the frequency of the individual sources. So this will be our task today, to try to understand the relationship between the beat frequency and the source frequencies. Key to understanding this is interference. To understand how interference produces beats, we need to review the wave or the signal that a tuning fork produces. Let's play the video now. 1024 hertz. So this was the signal a tuning fork produced and the x-axis represents time. So here we have simulated data I have created for each tuning fork. There's two tuning forks, so there's two graphs. Notice that the above graph has fewer waves. That's because the above graph represents the signal for a tuning fork that has added mass and as a result, it vibrates less. So the question is, when we have these two signals, when we have these two waves, what does the resulting interference look like? To answer that question, we need to add the signals. And so this diagram here represents the added signal, the addition of those two waves. So the question is, does this diagram show the high volume and low volume we just heard? So when we heard the beat, we heard a variation in volume. Does this diagram represent that? Does this diagram effectively show a beat? And the answer resoundingly is yes, it does. So I want you to focus on that area there, which is at around 0.25 seconds. Notice it seems to be a low point on the graph. It seems to be destructive interference. If we go back to the previous diagram, notice at 0.25 seconds, I've highlighted that, we are adding a trough and a crest. And we know that when we add a trough and a crest, the result is zero. There are two other points of destructive interference at 0 0.75 seconds and 1.25 seconds. Going back to these graphs, again notice at 0 0.75 seconds and at 1.25 seconds, I've highlighted what we're adding. We're adding a trough and a crest and that's why 
It's destructive interference. Those three areas in this graph represent low volume. Now to really understand beats, we need to draw a wave envelope. A wave envelope is a smooth line which outlines the extremes of this graph. Here's how we would draw the first part of the wave envelope. Here's the second part of the wave envelope. And here's the entire wave envelope for the upper half of the graph. And here's the wave envelope for the lower part of the graph. Notice I've outlined the three areas of low volume. They are the low points of the wave envelope. The high points of the wave envelope represent the loudest volume. Now going back to our definition of a beat. A beat is a periodic variation in volume or intensity. In other words, it's a point where we go from low volume to high volume and then back to low volume or vice versa. And so the area I've highlighted represents exactly one beat. Low volume to high volume and back to low volume. How many beats are there in total in this graph? Please pause the video now and take the time to count. All right, I hope you completed that exercise. All together we have three beats. Clearly you can see from this graph two beats, and on either side of those two beats you have half a beat. Adding all together you get three beats. Now let's determine the beat frequency. The beat frequency is defined as the number of beats over the total amount of time. Notice the time altogether is 1.5 seconds. Completing the division, the beat frequency is 2 Hz. And that literally means in one second you would hear 2 beats. In 2 seconds, 4 beats. In 3 seconds, 6 beats, and so on. So now, is there a mathematical connection between the beat frequency and the individual frequency of each source? So we have these two tuning forks creating these beats. Is there a connection? And the answer is yes. Let's go back to the original graph. One cycle is defined as a crest and a trough. So what I'd like you to do right now is count the number of cycles for each source. I know it's a law of counting, but please take your time to do this. Go ahead. Please pause the video now. All right, I hope you completed that exercise. For the first graph, hopefully you counted 18 cycles. And for the second graph, it was slightly more, 21 cycles. Now dividing by time to calculate frequency, we end up with 12 hertz for the first tuning fork that has a mass added to it and 14 hertz. Please remember this is simulated data. These tuning forks were actually vibrating much faster. And so how are these individual frequencies connected to the beat frequency of 2 Hz? So we've got 14 Hz and 12 Hz. They interfere to produce a beat frequency of 2 Hz. How are these three numbers connected? Well, there's the formula. The beat frequency equals the frequency of one source subtract the frequency of another source. 14 subtract 12, or 12 subtract 14. By the way, you can't have a negative beat frequency. And so these lines here represent absolute value. So 14 take away 12, or 12 take away 14, it'll always give you an answer of two. So the question is, where are beats used in real life? Well, musicians use beats to help tune instruments, including pianos, and guitars. When tuning a piano, one would use a 440 hertz tuning fork. They would strike that tuning fork and then at the same time play the A note above middle C, which is also called A4. If a beat is heard, this implies that the piano is out of tune. And so the goal of someone who is tuning 
an instrument is to keep playing these notes until a beat is no longer heard. I hope you enjoyed today's activity. Have a great day. Bye-bye.